All right. Uh, fourth time's the charm. <laughs> uh, so the first time I had an issue. I don't know. I didn't have something with me, so I stopped it. Then the second time I noticed I was breathing really heavily uh, because I caught the con, con plague. And so um, I got a, a scratchy throat and a stuffy nose. Uh, so I was breathing really heavily throughout and it was annoying the shit out of me while I was re-watching it. And then fourth way, some guy's outside my window. He's just screaming on the phone. And so it's really messing with my video. Uh, and then also the puppy's napping now. So she doesn't have to be whining because I'm in the gated room. Um, so now it should be okay. So Motor City Comic Con Hall 2017. Um, I'm going to start by thanking Scott Running With Comics, as you guys uh, may know him, uh, for housing all of us, um, for the air mattresses, for the couch, um, and you know the food, and the, and the beer, and the, the waters, and the, the con snacks, and, and just being an amazing host, and an amazing friend, and definitely one of my best friends. Uh, so I love you, buddy. Thanks so much. Shout out to his wife and his son. Uh, for also putting up with us, and as well as the cats for invading their space. Um, so, uh, love you, brother. Thanks again. Uh, this was an amazing five days, five nights uh, in Michigan. Long drive for me. Uh, along the way, I met up with Emski361. Uh, we had lunch. Uh, it was amazing to just finally meet up with him. He's so close yet so far. Uh, it's like a three-hour drive, um, which I had to go through. Uh, that area to get to Scott, so we decided we would meet up for lunch. So it was nice meeting you, uh, Brian, and hopefully we can meet up again next time you're around my neck of the woods. Um, so uh, if you don't know, Motor City Comic Con, we had me, Scott, running with comics, obviously the host. Uh, we had Nate, uh, Dark Nate 40, also kind of the host, but we didn't stay at his house. It was kind of in his area. We did invade his place a couple times. Um, Johnny DaCosta DC Comics and Greco Fabulous. So that makes up the five of us that were at the con this year. Um, it was amazing. Um, so uh, for this haul, I'm going to start with gifts from the guys. I'm going to go into signed stuff, trades, um, my one print maybe before the signed stuff. I don't know. Uh, and then I'll go into my single issues, which isn't that much, about half a short box full, um, but I did get some cool stuff. So, me and Nate have been working on, you know, I, we keep calling it a trade, but I think it's really more of like a random act of kindness for each other, or like a, a planned act of kindness, because we never really valued up the books to trade them, uh, and if we did that, I think uh, he definitely beat me, he definitely gave me more value-wise. Uh, but I did pay him for one book. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're friends, so it doesn't. It really doesn't matter. I'll get him back eventually anyway. Um, but, yeah, so I've been trading books. We traded probably half a short box with each other. Um, and I guess the major run he, he hooked me up with was uh, Wolfman and Perez, New Teen Titans. Uh, so there's books ranging from issue 3 to uh, 45 of Tales of the Teen Titans in here. So, uh, that makes my new Teen Titans run complete from 1 to 40. And then also I have 42 through 45. Uh, so if I find an issue 41, I'll have that complete. He also grabbed me some George Perez Wonder Womans. A lot of Perez in this haul, now that I think of it. Uh, so... We got 8, 12, 13, 23, 24, 34, and 35. Yeah, I said that right off the top of my head. Weird. Okay. Probably because I've shot this video four times now. Uh, hooks me up with a couple of Batmans. We have 389 and 390. Hooks me up with some Fantastic Fours. Right here, this 205 is the first appearance of the Nova Corps, so that's cool. One of those books that was missing in my run. Uh, and then here are the three big books uh, he got me. So in our trade, 
Uh, he hooked me up with a Adam Hughes background number one. As they all go tumbling down. Um, yeah, so this completes all of my first prints uh, for Gail Simone's back row run in the new 52. Sticking on the Adam Hughes wagon, we have a Justice League of America number 6, uh, the Black Canary 1 in 10 variant. I wanted this for probably going on five years now. I uh, never found one anywhere. Uh, Black Canary is one of my favorite uh, female heroes. I absolutely uh, love her. Uh, she's awesome, and uh, he found this, I believe, in Canada, and he got a, a sweet deal on it, and so uh, he didn't feel too bad flipping it my way now that it's kind of a hot book. Uh, so thanks, Nate. Uh, I mean, I did kind of trade you straight up uh, Detective 850, so um, yeah. So this is the book I paid him for. <laughs> uh, this is Nightwing uh, Ignites the Birds of Prey number 8, so this is Birds of Prey number 8. Uh, we have Nightwing and Oracle. They go on a date. Uh, Dick gets her on the trapeze again. Uh, you know, kind of makes her feel good about, you know, life in general. She's feeling really down. It's it's a really sweet issue. Um, and it's like a Nightwing, uh, Barbara Gordon key that you need, which are two of my favorite characters. Um, and I've been looking for it for a while. It was on my top ten list, so I can scratch that off now. That is in my possession. Um, so next from Greco, um, he hooked me up, uh, with a sketch, a sketch done by his hand on the cover of World War Tank Girl, number one, and he hooked me up with this sweet Batman, um, free commissions, uh, when you're best buds, <laughs> um, so, it's absolutely hilarious it took me uh completely by surprise i had no idea that he was gonna do this for me um and I, it's great i can't wait to to find a frame for it and put it up on the wall so next johnny hooked me up with a couple books uh helped me out with my jeff john's flash he got me uh 187 201 and then also this isn't jeff john's but flash time flies prestige format looks kind of weird um this is, I don't think it's ever been opened. It's really mint, so um, I'm tempted not to open it. Uh, and then also, he hooks me up with a sweet uh, Catwoman Adam Hughes cover, as well as an awesome story. Uh, this is Catwoman 83. This is a Gotham City Sirens appearance. Uh, in this issue, Catwoman goes up against the uh, revived Black Mask as a Black Lantern who is trying to get revenge uh, for Selena killing him, uh, putting a bullet through his skull, uh, about 50 issues before this. Um, and so she calls Ivy and Harley for help as he goes after uh, Maggie Kyle. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really good, uh, quick one shot, and I really enjoyed reading it. So uh, thanks, Johnny. Uh, really stoked about that. So next, from the man himself, not only... Uh, did he let me stay for free? He also hooked me up with a few gifts. Um, so this huge stack here, it's a bunch of action comics, or geez, detective comics. There'll be a couple action comics later. Hint, hint. Um, nothing crazy, like two issues. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, some of these books in here fill in my 600, 800, and others help me out, uh, when I expand that, that run. Uh, so I'll just go through a few of my favorite covers. Uh, so this one right on top, the Scarecrow 571 is sweet. Um, I guess we'll go into this sweet Tim Sale uh, Joker laugh, J Joker's Last Laugh cover. Another sweet Tim Sale Joker. It's 781. Uh, I don't want to show you all of them. I, I just love all of Tim Sale's covers on these. They're weird and awesome at the same time. So this is 786. I just love the green on this. Uh, probably my favorite of the Tim Sale covers in here. This is uh, 793. A sweet Mr. Freeze cover. And then I'll just show my favorite one next. Uh, 
the non Tim Sale covers. Um, this is Batman 851 uh, Gillen March um, Nightwing with the cowl there. Uh, he hooked me up with a couple of new 52 Aquamans, 7 and 9. And then the key issue that he hooked me up with was Life with Archie 286. Why this is a key issue? It's a key issue for the five of us because we now all own, uh, as another part of his random act of kindness, we now all own an original art page from a story in that book. This is Bowling did the artwork. Uh, this is page five of that story, or 21 in the book. Um, basically what happens is uh, the Lodge Corp, or Lodge Industries, is going to build a giant building on the forest and basically the gang from Riverdale just wants to save the forest so they have a group a town meeting and that's what happens they I won't spoil it but they try to save the forest so that does it with the stuff from the guys just kidding because Scott hooked me up with a pink Power Ranger pop which is awesome <laughs> because I ended up meeting the Pink Power Ranger. I got a picture taken with her and the Green Ranger, uh, which I guess I'll just show first. Um, and then I ended up going back and meeting her um, to get her to sign it for me. So, uh, yeah, Jason David Frank, me, and my Red Ranger shirt, uh, and Amy Jo Johnson. Uh, she was really sweet. Uh, she was very quiet with me and kind of patient because she could tell I got super nervous. Uh, so she just kind of smiled and um, kind of tried to keep conversation going a little bit. So I didn't get kind of, I don't know, really nervous. I just got beet red, like redder than this. Probably as red as my shirt when I got up to her and was like, asked her how she was. And after that, I was just kind of frozen. Um, it was, I, I guess as like a five, four, three, four, five, six-year-old throughout those years that I was really into Power Rangers, um, I always dreamed of actually meeting the Rangers, and I never thought I'd ever actually do it. And so I got to kind of meet Jason David Frank and really meet Amy Jo Johnson. So um, it was just kind of like that five-year-old dream of mine come true. Uh, so <laughs> it was like a big moment for me. I know the guys gave me a lot of a lot of shit um, throughout the weekend about it, but um, I mean, it was fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, defending myself and kind of the jokes that kind of went with it, but uh, it, it did mean a lot to me, and I think they knew that too. So um, <laughs> it was all in joking fun. So uh, a couple other signatures I got: I got uh, Ed McGinnis to sign Bat Superman Batman uh, issue four. I could have had him sign number one, but I love this cover because it's got uh, Superman vs. Shazam and Batman vs. Hawkman. Uh, Tom Rainey was there. Uh, Signed my favorite Outsiders cover that he did. Uh, number three, we have Joker, Lex, Nightwing, and Metamorpho. Um, and then I picked up a print and had it signed. This was done by Matthew Clark, I believe. Uh, it's a Nightwing. I believe Scott pointed out. I was like, oh, sweet, there's a Nightwing print there. And I was like, oh, crap, i got to buy it. It's 10 bucks. Uh, he signed it down here in gold. So I'll have to get a frame for that. And hang it up in my comic room here. And then probably the... Most amazing guy that we met at the con was Dave Gibbons. Uh, you know him as the artist from Watchmen, or he wrote a lot of Green Lantern and some other things, Doctor Who. So Dave Gibbons here, 2017 for CJ. Um, signed my, my trade. Um, dude was phenomenal. I stood in line with the guys for three hours. Uh, three of the five of us got sketches. I'm not going to say who. If you want to check those out, make sure you watch all the videos. Um, and so it obviously wasn't me. So... I got in there, uh, I was like, I was just waiting with these guys, all I want is a signature, uh, so if you want to just sign that book real quick, and he's like, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, basically, sit down, you can keep the, you keep the chair warm, and we ended up chatting for a couple minutes, so uh, he knew that I waited in line there for a while with the guys, and even though I wasn't getting a sketch, he, he made the most of it, and that, that really meant a lot. Uh, the guy was uh, phenomenal, him and his wife were there, they are chatting with everybody that came by, uh, spent his five minutes doing his quick sketch uh, for the Hero Initiative. All proceeds that he made went to the Hero Initiative, uh, which was also amazing. 
Um, I can't say any much more about the guy. Uh, I know Scott's got some cool stuff to uh, school. Th- cool things to say about him as well and eight does too i think all of us will have something some blurb about how nice he was um and just asked me about um you know life and and things like that and just didn't really care about comics it's just kind of you know being a person and that was that was really awesome uh one thing was funny i pointed out that he remembered the dots uh, for CJ, and he, he made some joke about how uh, I'm English, so I'm educated, unlike the Americans or something, as a joke. And then I slyly went like, you know, not all of us are uneducated. I'm trying to, work, I'm working on my PhD right now. And he's like, oh, and what? And I was like, biochemistry. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. Blah blah. blah. So uh, he's just just a really uh, nice guy, and I recommend taking the time to meet him, waiting in line. It, 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 he makes it worth your while because he knows his, his lines are long and, and he really gives you the peace of mind and, and the attention. Um, and it just goes a long way, you know, because we've had some bad experiences in the past and um, I had nothing bad to say about any of the creators I met uh, this year. Um, so the last signed book is The Program, which all four guys uh, sign every year. Um, this book is... Out of all the books I get, this one's the most important to me. It's going to go up on my wall uh, with the rest. So quickly, go through the trades. I picked up for $5 a piece. Um, we, I grabbed Witches, Volume 1. This is Snyder and Jock. I heard some bad things. I mean, not so bad things like it's eh, um, but I'm excited to, to check that out. Grab Black Magic, uh, Greg Rucka and Nicola Scott. Uh, Nate talked to Nicola Scott, so if you want some information about how that went down, make sure you watch his video. And Scott and Nate, oh, everybody's raving about Brubaker and Phillips. I haven't really gave that uh, creative team a chance yet, so here's Criminal Volume 1. I was told to start here, um, so I'll give this a read and see, see how much I like it, and then go from there. Um, next... I picked up three volumes of Wicked of the Divine for five bucks a piece. Uh, I was recommended this by my shop manager, and I've heard some other good things from other people. Uh, so I'm excited to check this out. I should have went back and grabbed four, but uh, whatever. I'll just grab it on in stock sometime. So a couple Marvel trades. I picked up uh, Avengers Defenders War. Uh, this uh, collects Defenders 8 through 11 and Avengers 115 through 118. This is a crossover that I didn't want to apply the Avengers issues for so I could read my Defenders run. So now I have that. I can get reading that. And then I also picked up Wolverine and the X Men Volume 2. Two years ago, I picked up Volume 1. So I probably should reread Volume 1 before I read this. Um, but yeah, so it's sealed. It was $6, I think. And now, trade-wise, my biggest steal from the con, I grabbed the entire lock and key run for $30. Uh, so, trades one through six, uh, right here. Um, pretty excited uh, to dive into this. I've been recommended it by so many people, um, and it's just amazing. I read the first one-third of, of trade number one, and I, I already love it. Um, I'm glad I can finally shoot this video and move this to my nightstand so I can start reading through it. So yeah, so there's that. Um, now I'll get into the single issues. I'm going to kind of go fast ish, if possible. So I grabbed issues 11 through 18 of New Avengers. So we got the Frank Show Spider-Woman covers here. Um, so just basically some some Marvel reading for me to do. And I picked up um, some Super, Superman, Batman, two of these are doubles. Um, this cover, I was told, is kind of a hot book. Or could potentially be a hot book, so I guess I'll have two copies of that. Picked up some Superman, Man of Steel. We got a cover swipe here. Uh, just filling in, filling in that run. Uh, Superman, 703. These are all dollar. Uh, actually, this was 50 cents. Um, because I, I didn't realize it came bagged with a Superboy book that I got that I'll show you. Um, some Barbara Gordon stuff. I picked it up. I can't get these books to stay without losing my spot in the bin. Uh, I picked up year, 
back earlier one that says issue two. Uh, I don't have one or six, so I picked up the rest. So, three, four of these books are not in the greatest condition. But, I will have them in the last There's issue five. Puppy is up, so if you hear some squealing, that's her in the background, because I'm in the other room, like I said, seven and eight. She's a good girl, maybe I'll bring her in here and show her off. And here's issue nine. Uh, and then I picked up this Showcase 94, issue 12. Uh, it's an Oracle uh, story for the first half. Uh, she's kind of dealing with being in the chair and kind of anxiety and things like that. Um, and she's got these people after her. Um, and it's just a really good, really good story. I was glad I picked that up for a buck. Uh, some more dollar books. I picked up Superman Confidential 1 through 7. Uh, issue 1 through 5 are done by Darwin Cook. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, with artwork by Tim Sale, who I've been picking up a lot of stuff from lately. Um, those are a dollar a piece. Just, uh, I heard some good things about it, so I just wanted to give it a read. I picked up Superboy number 1 by Jeff Lemire, 50 cents. Um, so I couldn't find issue 2 anywhere, but I was glad to pick up number 1 so I could at least read this. Uh, which I did already, and I, I really enjoyed it. I like to see, I want to see where it goes. So I'll be looking out for those other issues uh, this summer. Uh, I picked up some Robins, issues 32 through 40. Uh, so now I have issue 1 through 40 of Robin Completes. Uh, I picked up a bagged uh, collector set of Shadow of the Bat number 1. It is complete, sealed. Um, I have a loose copy. Um, now, so now I'm getting into like bronze and silver stuff uh, that I picked up. I uh, picked all these, most of these up from one vendor, at least the filler issues, and then the keys I'll, I'll go into after. Um, pull the keys out over to the side for now. Uh, so, I found this in the dollar bin. <laughs> Uncanny X-Men 138. It's got a little chunk missing there, but other than that, it's not too bad, actually. Uh, and for a dollar, a Dark Phoenix Saga issue, uh, it's kind of a key, so why not? I picked this up for two dollars. This is Justice League 75. This is the first Silver Age uh, appearance of Black Canary. Uh, I don't. I think it's the Silver Age version of Black Canary, or it's the first time the original. I don't know. Something with Black Canary. Uh, this is like one of those keys you have to get if you're a Black Canary fan. I found it for two dollars. It's beat to hell. Uh, water damage, stained, uh, but it's complete. And 100% attached, so for $2, I couldn't turn it down. So I found an issue of the Atom. I, after I bought this, I could have sworn I already had it, but I don't, so that's exciting. Uh, this is from 1964, I believe. This is the Atom issue 15. I always get this cover mixed up with that second appearance of Zatanna, but I need to remind myself that she's like in the corner um, on the cover as her second appearance. But yeah, I was still excited to pick that up. Here is a Neil Adams cover. This is Action Comics 361. Second appearance of Parasite. Uh, then we have, that was five bucks. Uh, as well as the Adam was five bucks. This was two dollars. Action Comics 385. VG condition, completely attached, 100%. Uh, hard to beat that. This is from 1970, so we'll call it Bronze Age. Uh, this is a Kurt Swan cover. It kind of reminds me of the Neil Adams Breaking the Chain cover. Uh, which I picked up a couple months ago. And then I picked up some Silver Age Flashes. Uh, two to be exact. This one was $10. But this is from 1962. Um, this is a Flash 133. Complete attached. Kind of beat a little bit. Like probably a VG. Uh, 133. I was picking it up thinking maybe it could have been the first appearance of Abracadabra. Uh, it's not. His first appearance was 128. So this is probably second, third, or fourth appearance. If for some reason it appeared in four out of five of those books. But yeah. Anyway, I stoked to get it. Uh, Carmine Infantino cover. So pretty sweet. And then I picked up the famous ginormous head flash cover uh, done by Ross Andrew. Uh, who I thought, was, I thought this was a Carmine Infantino cover for the longest time, but it's Ross Andrew. Um, so sorry, uh, Ross Andrew and your fans. Uh, you are an amazing artist. Um, but yeah, so this is his famous <laughs> ginormous head flash cover. Uh, this got rusty staples. It's kind of it kind of bleeds in. Um, but yeah, it's five bucks, so I'll pick it up till I can get a better copy. 
So now we'll go into the keys. Um, some of these are big. Uh, so I got Superman and Martian Manhunter, or Manhunter from Mars, uh, in DC Comics percent 27. This is the first appearance of Mongol, which I bought off of Nate, the Dark Knight 40, uh, for five bucks. <laughs> um, gave me the friend discount. Um, so I was really excited to pick that up. I was looking for it this weekend. Um, and then he was just like, yeah, I'll sell you my copy. Um, then I picked this up. Uh, I p probably paid too much, but this kind of broke the ice. I didn't buy anything for the longest time at that con. I, I just kind of bit the bullet and I, I spent 25 bucks on this book, which is kind of where I didn't want to spend. Uh, I didn't even try to haggle. I just kind of wanted to get the first one out of the way. Uh, this is Man of Steel 17. I knew if I didn't buy it then, I wasn't going to buy it at all, so I just did it. Uh, this is near mint, minus probably a 9, uh, 9.0, 9.2. Um, it wouldn't grade lower than that. It's got a couple spine ticks, and that's about it. Uh, I think I counted two exactly. They're non color breaking, so maybe it'll grade a little bit higher than that, but conservatively, it's probably about a 9.0. Uh, Cameo Doomsday, um, the money book, I guess, of the Doomsday trilogy in Man of Steel. So now these are the big books. <sighs> Honestly, I bought these from the same same guy. I kind of got wall happy. I started wall hunting a lot. Uh, I found this one first on Saturday. Uh, I paid 85 for it, which pretty stoked about. I wasn't looking for this at all. Um, this is a probably 3.0 to 3.5 copy of Doom Patrol 99, first appearance of Beast Boy. It's about what it goes for, 85 bucks on eBay. Um, but this is a book, I you never know what could happen to it, and it's a book I really want, being a huge Teen Titans fan. Uh, but I never really expected to buy it, um, because I didn't want to pay that much for it, and there's other books on my radar, but um, I think the opportunity presented itself, and sometimes you just have to let the deals come to you, uh, and not be so, I guess, hell-bent on finding your one book. Uh, which I kind of was, and that kind of threw me off on Friday. I was looking for my killing joke, and I couldn't find it. And then I let one slip away from me on eBay because I was certain I could get a, get one at the con, which did, never happened. Um, so now, these two books were ones that I, I wasn't looking for either. Um, I got these for the pair. I went back on Sunday to the same guy, and I was like, listen, I bought that first Beast Boy off of you yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to get another book, you know, to kind of, another book or two uh, to get off the wall and really uh, solidify my haul for this weekend. And so I looked at these two books, uh, I, I talked them down, uh, $45. So it was $210 for the pair, I got them for $165, so $82.50 a piece. Um, and I'm super happy with that deal. Uh, one of them I paid going price for and the other one I got a sweet deal on. So I think I made out good. So the one I got for about going price, uh, this is probably about a 3 0 um, it would grade a little higher. It's kind of loose at the staple. It's not loose at the staple. It's got uh, tears. The staples are really tight. It's just got some tears around them. You know how it kind of happens on these old books. Uh, somebody just maybe opened it a little too hard and it's got like, I don't know, like half a centimeter tears um, at the staples. Uh, but they're firmly attached. Everything's attached. Centerfold's attached. Uh, the pages are off white to cream. Uh, they're not too brown, which is exciting. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just show it. This is Jimmy Olsen 134. Uh, this is the first appearance of, or first cameo of Dark Side. Like, the spine's got some ticks, but um, for being a dark cover, I, it's got really nice colors to it. Uh, it's still glossy. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this because uh, paying under $100 for the first appearance of a major DC villain, I think, is still an amazing deal. And I think this is a book that people really need to kind of jump on now. Um, before something outrageous happens and it becomes kind of out of reach. Uh, so I was really excited to get that. And this book, I've been looking for this forever. I never want to pull the trigger because uh, when I first started collecting, you could easily get a nice copy of this for like uh, 40 bucks. But as the market's changed, uh, these Silver Age keys kind of go up and up. Uh, some of them kind of stay the same or are still flying to the radar. But this is one that's kind of seen... Uh, a nice rise, and I think for the condition this is in, paying eighty two fifty for it was a, a really good deal. Um, and books in this in this grade range um, go for more than that on eBay, so I was really excited. This is about a six point oh, uh, could go higher, but I think conservatively a six point oh copy of Hulk one oh two. 
the spine is in phenomenal condition. Like, there's barely any ticks. Like, there's, like, one or two. Two ticks. It, li it lies flat. It's got really tight corners. It's centered beautifully, I must add. Uh, it's glossy, uh, off-white pages. Uh, the back cover is kind of a little more cream, uh, but it's still pretty white in the, in the letters. Uh, but the major issue, Mylar glare, is that there's some, like, I don't know, some color breaks up here. Like, it's like, I don't know, it looks kind of like somebody, like, it's very mildly took, like, a little corner of sandpaper and it lost some of its, uh, the paint up there. But, uh, it's hardly noticeable with the rest of this, this beauty. So, I was really stoked to finally get this book. I always get jealous when I see it in videos, like, uh... Shannon, solid foresty Ben, always has one in his background, and um, a bunch of other people have picked this up uh, in the past couple of years, and I, I get jealous. And I wasn't expecting to buy it this weekend, and I did. So yeah, that's the haul. I uh, also went to a comic store in the area, so I'll just throw this in. Um, we went there mainly because Scott and Nate knew they had toys. Uh, if you know Greco Fabulous, he loves toys. Um, so we picked some things up there. I'm not going to to spoil his haul if he gets it up by next August, like he said, uh, you can watch it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here is a inbox, uh, Zach, the Black Power Ranger. Uh, it is sealed. Um, it looks like it probably was resealed, uh, but it's complete. It's inbox. It has the blaster still taped up on the corner, uh, and Zach is nice and zip-tied in there. So I was pretty stoked to find this for $13, um, and it's not... 100% damage. Like they had a Trini there, uh, it was popped in, so like it was all exposed. Uh, this one, the bubbles attached and complete. So I was excited to get that for thirteen dollars, uh, and opened a whole new can of worms for me because now I got to get the other four. So yeah, a little Power Rangers crazy lately. Um, I guess one more time, I'd like to thank Scott. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed the books I picked up and. Uh, it's half an hour long video. Hopefully it wasn't too too bad for you guys. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, thanks a bunch. Uh, and I will be around. Um, so, peace.